What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll show you how to migrate from one drive to another. Say you're taking your data off a hard drive and putting it onto an SSD for faster boot times, you're getting a bigger drive or anything like that will be keeping everything, including your Windows installation or whatever OS you're using and copying everything from one drive to another drive, whether it's bigger, newer or anything like that. Let's get into it. So first of all, you'll obviously need both of the drives connected to the same computer in some capacity or another. Whether you've got both of them plugged in via a USB external drive times two, one for your new and one for your old drive, or you've got them both inserted into your PC like I physically do, I've connected them both up to my motherboard or anything like that, you just need them connected to the same computer, whether you're booted onto one of them or not. I'm running my normal PC over here with everything in it, and I've got the drive that I want to copy data from over here, this 120 gig SSD, it's really full and I just want to copy everything off onto a brand new drive. So let's do that. First of all, I've hooked up both of these drives, but only one of them is visible, or sometimes neither of them are visible when you've hooked them up to a new computer. In order to get these drives to show, we'll need to open up Partition Manager. So I'll simply hit start, type in partition, and we'll search for partition manager or disk management, etc. A window like this has popped up. For now, I'll just click cancel so nothing changes, and I'll put it across to the center of my screen. Having a closer look at this, you can see that I've got my C drive over here and everything else. And if we scroll down on the list here, you'll see used partitions with a drive letter show as blue with a letter. So for example, H, C, etc. And unused drives show as black as such. So I can already tell which one is my brand new drive and it's this 500 gig drive over here. In order to initialize it, I'll right click it, choose initialize disk. I'll make sure everything's checked, select GPT, which is the newer version and click okay. There we go. At this stage, we can right click and choose new simple volume. If you'd like to use it like a normal external hard drive or something, you can drag files onto it and use it as usual. But in my case, I'll be copying a complete drive onto this so that it's bootable and has all of the special information required for that. This one that I'm going to be copying off is already mounted as disk Y and you can see it appearing over here. When I plugged it into this PC, it wasn't showing up on my Explorer at all. So this window was missing this drive. I simply opened up disk management and looked for the correct drive size and one that didn't have a letter. In my case, it was disk two over here at around 120 gigs which is the actual size of the disk and the biggest partition listed as healthy. I needed to right click and choose change drive letter or give drive letter, anything like that. Click it and a window like this will pop up. I'll assign it letter Y, for example, hit OK as such. And now you'll see that it pops up in your Explorer just like this. Sweet. Now that we've got both our new drive initialized and our old drive mounted so we can have a look at our data, let's go ahead and copy everything across. While you could do it manually, copying all the files yourself, you're going to miss some special hidden sectors that allow this drive to be bootable. In order to copy those hidden sectors, you'll need to use another tool, whether third party or built into something like Linux, in order to copy or image one drive to another. In this video, I'll be showing you Macrium Reflect. It's just a free piece of software that I found that lets you do exactly what I want to do here, but there's thousands of different programs that essentially let you copy partitions from one drive to another and later on expand them. So heading across to the link in the description down below to download the free edition of Macrium Reflect, I'll click download x64 here, wait five seconds and save it so I can then open it and install it. So I'll choose next here and click through the installer. I'll leave it as personal use for which it's completely free. I'll take this just to say I am using it for personal use next and skip through this. I'll untick it and skip through this. I don't think I need either of these. So I'll take off the first one. I'll leave the desktop shortcut, click next and install. There we go. Obviously, if you're going to be using different software, the steps are going to be similar, but not exactly the same. You'll see what I mean. All of the software really looks pretty similar. A lot of these come built in if you're not able to access your drive at all in something like the Hiren's boot disk or another kind of rescue live CD. Anyways, zooming out over here, you can see the software showing all of my different partitions and of course the ones that we haven't used, such as the unformatted one over here. It even shows the name of the drives. So here's my 512 new drive and over here with letter Y is the one that I'll be copying from. All you want to do here is click the drive that you want to copy data from. So I'll click the partition here, Y, 
as such, and you'll see right below it, clone this disk. I'll click this button, and this window pops us, asking us which partitions we want to copy. We want to copy all of these. Make sure everything here is ticked as such. Then, for the destination, we'll select a place where we want this to go. We'll click select a disk to clone to, and in this pop-up window, we'll simply need to scroll until we find the one that's brand new or empty as such. This one is completely empty. TForce 512 gig is my new drive. I'll select this, and now we need to double, triple, quadruple check that everything is correct. Are we copying from the correct? drive to the correct location. So opening up my file explorer, partition Y is the old disk that I want to copy data from. Then the completely brand new drive over here, therefore it should be correct. With both of these absolutely correct, all we need to do now is click next. Then on the screen, we can schedule it to happen later if you want. I'll just be clicking next as I want to run it right now. When we get to the screen here, make sure everything is correct once more. So the source disk is 120 gigs, Western Digital, which I'm copying from, and the destination is my 500 gig T4 SSD. This is good. I'll go ahead and click finish as soon as we're happy with this. Now you'll get a pop-up saying whether you'd like to save the configuration to run it later as well. I won't be doing this on a regular basis, so I'll uncheck this and we'll just make sure that run the backup now is ticked. Then we'll click OK, and it should immediately start copying from one drive to the other. Depending on the size of your drives or how big they are, how slow they are, it's going to take quite a while, especially if there's many hundreds of gigs, if not terabytes. Anyways, we just need to wait for this to finish, verify, and we should be done. All right, so now that we've reached 90% in about, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes, it's only a 100 gig drive. I'll show you exactly how you can predict how long is left. Oh, looks like it's finished. As you can see on my task manager over here, that we have disks that we're reading from and writing to. Just having a look between these, you can see the general speed of reading and writing. I was actually hoping this would go a little bit longer so I can show you exactly what it looks like. But essentially, you'll be looking at the drive that you're writing to or reading from and see how many megabytes a second you're transferring at. Then simply just Google, say 110 gigabytes divided by 110 megabytes per second, and you'll get a result of around, I don't know, 15 minutes in my case, which is super quick. And that's pretty much exactly how long it took here. Anyways, I couldn't show you it better. I'll click OK here and close. That's it. We're completely done here. Now, if I open up my file browser, you'll see that I have two drives that look exactly the same, a Y drive that I copied from and a D drive that I copied to. But even though this is a 500 gig drive, it's only showing us 111 here, exactly matching the previous drive. What's happening? Well, it copied every single partition exactly as it is, meaning we now need to expand this partition to fill the entire drive. I'll go ahead and close Macron Reflect and we'll open Partition Manager once again just to see exactly what's happening. Pulling it up and pulling it across, you can see here that I've got my Y drive, which is what we copied from 111 gigs. And right up here, we've got our D drive, which is what I copied to. You can see that there's 360 gigs of unallocated space. All we need to do is right click our copied to partition on our new drive and expand it to fit the rest of the drive. So I'll right click my D drive over here that I copied to. We'll click extend volume and next we'll leave everything as is, which should automatically take up all of the remaining available space. We'll click click next and finish. Now, just like that, our new copy takes up 400 and something gigs and our old drive still takes up around 111. If I look at my file browser once more, you'll see that we have our Y drive over here with all of these files on it, almost full, and our brand new drive, D over here, almost empty with all of the same files on it. That's it. It should be an exact one-to-one -one copy so you can swap this in your PC and boot onto it as you would usually. Just a quick note that if you are going to swap a bootable drive with another fresh bootable drive that you just copied everything to, you may need to go into your BIOS and under the settings followed by boot or boot order, you'll need to select this drive to boot from just so you make sure you're booting from the correct drive. And if you made a duplicate of another bootable drive, if you want to keep both of them in your system, just make absolutely sure that you're booting from the correct one so you can wipe and use the other one as you would usually after making sure that all of your data is there. That's it. It's that simple. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.